If your engine makes this noise, then you have a big problem. Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Before we get into things, make sure you hit that like button. It really does help me out and it shows your appreciation. Now then, right here in front of me, I have a BMW inline six N52 engine in my BMW 130i. Now, the engine noise that I'm talking about today is not specific to this engine. It's not specific to any engine. It can occur in pretty much any engine in any car. So what am I talking about today then? So the engine noise that I'm talking about today is a rattle and it is a very distinctive rattle. And you will typically hear it when the engine is idling. Now let me get the microphone in close and see if you can hear that rattle that I'm talking about. Now this is of course not the general ticking from hydraulic lifters, it's not the ticking that you may get from direct injection fuel injectors. This is a much worse problem. Now of course it can sound like a rattle but it can also sound like a slight knock or a flapping noise and again it will always be at the back of the engine where the engine meets a transmission. Now in this car this is a six speed manual transmission and this problem you'll probably only notice it in a manual transmission car. Now if we head on inside we may be able to hear the rattle a little bit clearer as well. So then of course inside of the car now see if you can hear that rattle again. Yeah, I really don't know how well the microphone is picking this uh, rattle up, but essentially it goes away when I depress the clutch pedal. Now, what does this mean? This means that we have some very expensive parts coming up. So, I'm pretty sure, I'm 90% sure that this is a DMF rattle or dual mass flywheel rattle. So if you don't know what a DMF is or a dual mass flywheel, essentially the flywheel bolts to the engine on the end of the crankshaft. Now a traditional single mass flywheel is just a solid piece, but a dual mass flywheel is essentially two flywheels joined together with springs. Now those springs help to uh, damper any vibrations and essentially leads to a much uh, smoother experience. And pretty much all modern cars have dual mass flywheels. And there are some debates whether or not you should uh, convert to a single mass flywheel. I would never do that personally. You're just gonna make your, um, you know, your car uh, an unpleasant experience. For sure, if it's like a just a, a solely a track uh, car, then you know consider doing it. But it's a um, you know this is a, a daily driver, and I want to keep it uh, as factory as possible. So, yeah, I have no plans to convert this to a single uh, mass flywheel. So, I think we need to uh, swap out the dual mass flywheel now. I must say that. This is something that I planned on doing this year anyway. I'm pretty sure that this is still on the original clutch. The car has covered 140,000 miles. So how much life is left on that clutch, I really don't know, but um, I don't really want to find out. Um, now you could say, well, why don't you just wait till you know the clutch completely wears or it starts slipping and then swap it out. Yeah, that's what you'd probably do if you was, um, you know, just your average person. But I actually have pretty big plans for this car. So I plan on doing a full underside restoration, swapping out all of the suspension components, all of the bushes, um, all of the, um, of course, the uh, prop shaft. We have the um, guibo, then we also have the center support bearing. I plan on swapping all that out and basically refreshing the whole underside of the car and tackling any uh, rust that we may have as well. Now, I thought while I'm doing that, it's gonna make things a lot easier with the transmission out. And of course, while I'm removing the transmission, I may as well do a clutch and flywheel job. And I'll probably do like the master cylinder 
um, the slave cylinder and like the uh, clutch uh, forks and everything as well. So yeah, I'll probably like tackle a whole bunch of uh, jobs at the same time. And so yeah, I'm really not too worried about, you know, this dual mass flywheel rattle. It will probably be fine to drive for months, maybe even years. Um, you know, it, it, how long you have left on your flywheel after you develop this rattle, there's no real uh, way of knowing. Um, but it can get worse and it can, of course, um, eventually destroy your clutch. So it is, if you do have a rattle, on idle with you know when you are um, out of gear you know your clutch isn't uh, depressed then it's more than likely your uh, dual mass flywheel on its way out like i said um you know it's an expensive item for what it is you're talking three or four times the price of a single mass flywheel equivalent um, but you're just going to ensure that you have a much uh, smoother experience. If you're talking a ballpark figure for one of these cars, is the BMW 130i, of course, I would say you're looking around the £500 mark just for the dual mass flywheel. The clutch kit, you can probably get that for about £150 to £200, uh, but the dual mass flywheel, that is the most expensive item for sure. Of course, you have to renew all of the bolts as well. Now, say for example, if your just your clutch was worn, your clutch disc was worn, um, should you ever just swap out the clutch without doing the flywheel? Some people say you're fine to do so, but me personally, if I'm doing this job, if I'm swapping out the clutch on one of these, I'm gonna do the flywheel at the same time. Yes, it's a lot of money for the part. It's no extra labor though. And you don't want to swap out, you know, you don't want to put a new clutch onto a worn flywheel because then if you have a flywheel issue, it's just going to um, destroy your clutch and you're going to have to end up uh, replacing the clutch again anyway. So, yeah, if you have a car with a dual mass flywheel and you need to swap out the clutch, swap them, swap the whole lot at the same time. Don't do the job um, twice and make sure of course you use good quality parts like uh, LUK or SAX or an OEM uh, equivalent um, maybe Valio or something like that uh, as well but yeah hopefully this video has been uh, somewhat insightful um, hopefully you all have enjoyed it um, it's not actually been long since I've noticed uh, this rattle and um, yeah I guess you could say this car may be coming off the road for um, some time in the foreseeable future while I take you know while I tackle all of the um, all of the work you know the whole underside of the car is going to be stripped down so yeah that's going to be uh, some good fun and I'm sure a good uh, winter project along with all of the other things that I've got going on but yeah like I said hopefully you all have enjoyed this video anyway please give it a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you have not already done so and I'll see you all in the next one peace